Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about a 1946 movie called The Spiral Staircase, released by Kino Lorber, I believe in 2018, directed by Robert Seadmock. Uh, it stars Dor Dorothy McGuire, George Brent, Ethel Bar Barrymore. And this is a 4K scan that was uh, made from a restored fine grain master. And let me tell you, if you like black and white cinematography, especially of the <laughs> late 1940s era, uh, this is one to watch because this movie, to my untutored eyes, um, looks absolutely fabulous. I mean, the, the look of the film itself is a work of art. Story-wise, it's uh, Dorothy McGuire is playing a uh, paid companion to a bedridden woman played by Ethel Barrymore. Uh, McGuire is playing a part that uh, requires a great deal of pantomime because she is mute. She is mute from a traumatic incident that happened to her when she uh, during her childhood. And the film, which is set in the early 1900s, uh, involves a serial killer who has already killed a couple of uh, women uh, in a small town. And um, these women, uh, both of the, the victims had um, uh, some sort of disability, which of course makes uh, Dorothy McGuire's part, her character, a, a, uh, a potential victim as, as she, is, she is mute. Um, and um, there's multiple suspects, are, are uh, actually I guess probably three suspects. Um, so we have, a, we have a combination of genre here and we have uh, um, we, we have uh, very much of a, a horror film, especially towards the end of the film, a great deal of suspense. Seamock was, was really a brilliant suspense director. Um, it has very much a gothic element to it. Uh, the scenes, uh, and there were some of the early scenes are at night, outdoor scenes, a thunderstorm, uh, a puddle <laughs> in which uh, Dorothy McGuire uh, drops her key as the as the um, we we don't see who the who the uh, stalker and uh, killer uh, is. He's lurking behind a tree. Uh, but um, after that, it, the movie is set in, in the old dark house. Kind of, uh, it's not not really so much dark. Certainly, when they go to the basement, <laughs> we have darkness. But it's a well-to-do family, um, uh, and. Uh, very much, uh, as well, many noir elements. You couldn't possibly escape the noir elements here, uh, the darkness, uh, and then some of uh, the expressionism of C. C. Mock's uh, Germanic expressionistic uh, uh, early days, where we get we don't see the uh, um, we don't see the killer, but we see his eye, <laughs> and very expressionistically. And, and this was Seedmock's own eye. He didn't want any of the potential suspects to be, have the, the killer you know, given away by what their eyes look like. So he used his own eye. <laughs> it's very scary. <laughs> um, and uh, um, so, so we have all these different elements of the film. But to me, the star of the film, and, and this is not to denigrate Dorothy McGuire, who I think is fantastic in this film, uh, but to me, the star of the film was the cinematographer, Ni Ni Nicholas Mus Masaraka. I always, get, I always stumble over his name, Musaraka. And he was the genius of RKO. He was the genius cameraman of RKO, the lighting and the effects. And he was part of uh, the Val Luton uh, series of films. He did Cat People and a couple of the other ones. Um, and in the next year, this was 46 and 47, comes uh, out of the past, probably one of the greatest film noirs of all time. And, and he actually filmed, uh, I learned in the supplements, he, he filmed a movie called Stranger on the Third Floor in 1940 uh, with Peter Lorre, which some film historians actually uh, position as the beginning of the film noir period. Uh, and he would, he only got nominated for Academy Award one time for I Remember Mama, really one of the few prestige Oscar-type uh, movies that he ever filmed. Um, and looking over his filmography, boy, did he have a long uh, period of apprenticeship all through the 1930s, making filming short films, B-movies, 
But with RKO, he really comes into his own. He is, I think, one of the great masters of of the Hollywood studio system. And as always, you know, I concentrate, as, as many people do, on the director. And uh, I sometimes uh, uh, overlook the screenwriters and the, and the cinematographers. But uh, Musaraka was just an incredible uh, uh, cinematographer, and especially in black and white. And did he not like color? I think he made one or two color films. but. Uh, as we go into the 1950s and color starting, starting at least to become more predominant, Musaraka went into TV work. He filmed the I Love Lucy uh, series, many, many credits all the way up. I think his last credits were in 1966 for McHale's Navy and F Troop. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> great artists like Musaraka making um, these kind of uh, uh, run-of-the-mill, at least as far as the look. Or maybe I, I, I uh, overlooked the look of, uh, of uh, Mikhail's Navy, and, uh, but nevertheless, these, his, his period in the 1940s is one of the great artistic uh, um, experiences that you could have in, in, in watching films uh, of that era. And we also have a commentary by Imogen Sarah Smith. I often uh, uh, tout her great um, survey of film noir called In Lonely Places, film noir, uh, beyond the city. Uh, she, she writes very uh, elegant prose, uh, and her uh, style, her delivery is very elegant, it's very prepared. Um, she gets to the heart of the, what films are about. The, um, the, uh, I mean, I could listen to her all day. I mean, she just, uh, she has the kind of uh, non-polemical, uh, uh, this uh, kind of journey of discovery. This is uh, how we look at films. We and 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 she, she understands how all these different forces, whether they be from the creative side or from the um, historical side, and how they all come together. And certainly in Hollywood in the 1940s, the late 1940s, who would have ever thought how good these films would would uh, end up being? You know, 70, 80 years later, and. Um, uh, so, she she um, has quite a few commentaries, and I'm going to be doing a uh, kind of a triple feature. Uh, so I, this is a spiral staircase, uh, and uh, I'm soon going to do plan on doing Night Has a Thousand Eyes. John Farrow directed it with G. Robinson, the star, which with an Imogene Sarah Smith commentary, and then. The Tarnished Angels. Um, this is a Douglas Sirk film with Brock Hudson and uh, Robert Stack and um, Dorothy Malone. So you'll you'll get a lot of and some of the information that I've given you uh, it comes from the commentary by Imogen uh, Sarah, Sarah Smith. Um, but overall, you know, this is really this is uh, it's a scary movie. It's a beautiful movie. Highly recommend it. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody who managed to listen to me. Appreciate it as always, and comments would be welcome. You guys take care.